Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. I was testing some uh, coax from a manufacturer in the United States, uh, some RG8X. While testing that coax, it failed. Uh, the amplifier then discharged basically a really high voltage arc from the tube through this glass that sits around the tube as a chimney and into the um, uh, side wall of the amplifier. Let me show you the hole. This is hard to believe, but this is exactly what happened. There's the hole, and here's a close-up of, um, of that hole. That hole and the damage done, which was many hundreds of dollars, was a result of poorly made coax. We'll discuss more of that right after this break. When there's no one else around, I can be found on the air. Passing messages via the sun, and I'm still having fun. After all of these years. One of the things that I've mentioned in many of the videos is that the most important part of your station is the antenna system. Now that can be composed of a watt meter, coax, rotator, support structure of some kind, uh, and it includes the antenna. So why is it so important? Well, if there's any place in the system where there's going to be a loss that can affect the signal strength on receive and transmit, it's the antenna system and that includes the coax. In testing the coax um, from a number of sources, I found a lot of it was just poorly made. Uh, let me give you an example of some of that coax. I'm gonna bring up a picture of, um, so the boot is kind of hanging from the coax and you can see the strands of the shield are, uh, slow it down here, are just around uh, the perimeter of the coax and really not making good contact. Now what happened here uh, was that the RG8X center conductor migrated through the dielectric, the insulator that's in the middle, and ended up shorting out the, co um, shorting out the coax right about the point where you can see the, the braid sticking out. Now I didn't mess with this, all I did was take a knife cut away the, uh, uh, that boot to expose what was inside. And you can see pretty clearly, despite my bad photography, that the um, shield is just sticking out and not, um, to say it's poorly done probably is an understatement. And in fact, if you look at this, the strands are dark right at the ring of the coax connector. And that's because it, uh, it arced really bad. Now, there's another thing about uh, this kind of coax that you may not be familiar with. And that is that that barrel that you're looking at right now, this, or the sleeve that goes over the coax connector, in this case, that one is very long, and let me slide this forward just a little bit so it's in focus. There's um, so is the is it screwed on to the SO239? Um, it doesn't. The uh, body of the coax connector doesn't always seat against the SO239, and it can remain loose. Let me show you a picture of that. Okay, there's a standard SO239 the kind that would go on to a, uh, the back wall of a chassis or perhaps an amplifier or switch. Now I've run the barrel down as far as it will go and look at that. It's not secured to the coax connector. You can rotate the thing. Why is that a problem? Well, at some point it's not going to make any contact at all. It's going to be open circuit. Let me see if I can fast forward just a bit. So the barrel of the PL-259 is down all the way, 
but it's not tied to the SO239. Okay, so with the SO2 now with the SO239 being loose, as RF is applied to that circuit, it can become open, or the impedance instead of it being 50 ohms becomes some other number like three or four hundred ohms. And the amplifier connected to that circuit may fault, it may have a fault, it may arc internally, any number of uh, damaging uh, coax switches, uh, band switches, uh, plate loading capacitors, all kinds of stuff. So buying cheap coax is a hazard, not just in terms of performance, but it's ability to conduct the RF from your radio room outside to an antenna. It may not do a good job of that. And as a result, you may damage your Ameritron amplifier or homebrew amplifier, whatever it is. It's at risk due to the coax. Now, another thing to look at is how much performance do you get out of the coax? What what does it look like in terms of uh, signal strength when you uh, bring up that? Now, here's another way to look at the performance of coax. And it's hard for me to demonstrate the difference in noise that you might experience by switching between lousy coax and a good grade of coax. So I got from DX Eng Engineering their 400 max and it's been described to me as the 400 being the diameter of the coax. It's a 0 .405. And the, the, what they designed into that coax was to get the maximum amount of RF from point A to point B with a good shield. So it's got a 100% shield. There's foil and a braid. And I'll show you a picture of that in just a minute. This is a video that I made, and it's going to be a little bit confusing, but it was the best way I could show what happens with two different kinds of coax. The first graph of signal is RG8X. The second graph is DX Engineering 400 Max. Now, it was to record uh, EA3JE, who... <laughs> Call CQ for a long time, makes lots of contacts. So I recorded him and switched. I'd be on one coax and the other coax. The 8X, the 400 max, 8X, the 400 max. I did that over and over again, and I stacked the results of that one on top of the other and got the computer to draw lines indicating signal strength. Now at the bottom is noise, and that doesn't show much. But what I want you to look at is the average signal strength. The one on the left is 8x. The one on the right is 400 max. And what, what does that signal look like in total? So here's the beginning of it. The uh, first, now there were many words said at this point. But take a look at the overall signal strength. Just in, look at the graph the lines and see which one shows more signal. Now, as this goes up, that's more signal into my receiver. So the taller this is, the better it is in terms of me being able to hear him. And, and this would be true for any number of stations. Now, I did not record his audio. I guarantee you he's calling CQDX and often West Coast. So as we look at that, um, take uh, just a look at the overall performance. Which one has more lines? The, uh, which side has the tallest lines on average? It's not something that I can do mathematically. Uh, this was the best way to come up with it. So basically, these were two sets of recordings. I pushed them together for the display. Um, it was several minutes of recording. One uh, stacked on top of the other. I'm going to stop the playing of this and just look at uh, the massive lines at the top. 
Uh, forget the width, it doesn't matter. Uh, his signal tends to be a little on the broad side, but that's, that's not what I was measuring. So he was my beacon. This is uh, maybe 20 minutes worth of recording, switching back and forth, A and B, 8X and 400 max. And look at where most of a signal uh, ends up, just on the average. The one on the right is at least one dB stronger and uh, maybe two. So, uh, and the coax would indicate, uh, based upon its performance, something on the order of one dB. But our RG8X did not perform as well as the 400 Max. Cheap coax may cost you many times the price when stuff fails. Uh, coax switches, antenna tuners, everything is at risk when that coax develops a short, if it does. Um, it might be okay as a jumper in the radio room. I'm not going to use any of it. That decision, decision is yours. Another thing about the 400 Max that I can't demonstrate, but um, it, it did happen, R5AJ, uh, uh, has a terrific signal into California, but one night uh, Valeri was really weak, so I did the A-B test with him, uh, listening to him. 8X, 400, 8X, 400. On the 8X, his signal was in the noise, and I could get maybe every other word. Switched to the uh, 400 max, his signal came up, and he was 100% copy. Um, point being, the shield... I'll show you here a picture. The shield on the coax is really spectacular. Um, 400 max, and you can see the foil shield, which is 100% shield, and then the braid over that. Stranded center conductor, and that really special dielectric, um, and that tough as nails jacket. So it's and because that stranded center conductor it can turn a pretty tight radius, I think they state six inches. I've started nano VNA and I'm sweeping it now. This is a hundred feet of the four hundred max. Okay, it's got it at hundred and four feet long, and let's see if we can find the loss. Okay, the return loss is uh, about 1.4 dB, so 7 tenths of a dB. Let's do 30 megahertz. Be out here. Looks like it's right about 2. So at 30 megahertz, yeah, it's, it's about 1 dB loss. Um, let's look at the next coax which is the uh, RG8X so again for comparison at 30 megahertz this is 1 dB loss at uh, 20 meters it's about 7 tenths of a dB okay this is the gray stuff so let's sweep it and see what happens okay at about 20 meters, the loss is 2.3 dB, so about 1.15. And then at 30 megahertz, it is 3.6, so that would be 1.8. Eight plus a little. Okay, the length of this coax is probably about right, 102 feet. Let's go to the website for DX Engineering. And they've got a, a page with some stats on it for their coax. All right, one thing I didn't realize on their website, 
um, so I'm learning to use it, is the page can be a lot longer than I thought. Um, so let me find, I'm struggling because of the cataracts to, uh, to read the screen. So let's blow things up a little here. All right, so you've got 400 max, 50 ohm. That's an 18 foot length, nine foot length. 100, oh, now that is interesting. Here's 150 feet. Okay, I had no idea. So here's 125. They're offering probably too many different lengths. Uh, let's see if I can find. Okay, here's 100 feet of this stuff. This is what I was looking for. 100 feet, 400 max, 100 feet long, assembled. And... Um, see what the data shows point a to db which is about what we measured all right um Now, if you buy it by the foot, I think it works out to just under $120 um, for just the, um, the coax without connectors. So buying it with the connectors installed is just a bargain because uh, I'm sure there are costs to do that. Uh, buying the connector, paying somebody to put them on, the time to do that um, for $145 and free shipping, that's hard to believe. And again, you can see the, um, the connectors that they use. And that's how mine looked when it arrived. Uh, just good luck and stuff. The life of coax like that, I don't know. Um, other kinds of coax, even though it would say non-contaminating jacket, over time, um, if you cut it open, and that reminds me of something too, if you cut it open, it didn't look so good on the inside. And it was hugely lost if you measured it. That's something too. There'll always be some guy at a swap meet with rolls of coax that he's offering for sale that may be new, may not be new, Unless it's some guy that you know and that you can take home and measure that coax uh, for loss, that bargain may end up being a lousy deal. Um, it's much better to buy new coax far and away. And again, this is about the most important part of your uh, of your station.